put me on trial Told me you loved me for a long, long while But now you've left me to go on a spree You wanna find out, baby, how it felt to be free Well, all right, baby Ooh. I'm Janice Martin with female Elvis The girl with a golden voice uh, Little Miss Elvis, Queen of Rockabilly uh, Little Miss Hillbilly uh, Bitch Janice Martin was born in rural Virginia and started playing guitar at the age of four. Her earliest memories are of her musical environment. There was a black church up the road, uh, and we would go out on a Sunday afternoon because they had church services all day long. We would go out there and hide in the weeds and listen to them. And some of the prettiest singing, I mean rollicking music. I mean, it was something happening, and oh, I loved it. I mean, it was really, really good music. Janice's love of music led her into the world of talent contests, tent shows, and radio barn dances. At a very early age, she fell in with many of the most important country stars of her day. But her real passion was another kind of music altogether. In 1953, I was part of the cast of the Old Dominion Barn Dance, and we traveled from South Boston to Richmond each Saturday. And uh, I was fiddling with the radio, trying to find something I liked, and I ran up on the song, Ruth Brown's Mama, He Treats Your Daughter Me. I said, that's it, that's it. Hey, mama, he treats your daughter me. Me, me and I've ever seen. And it wasn't long after that till I told the guys when we'd go down on the Old Dominion Barn Dance, I'd say, uh, have you heard Ruth Brown? You know, do you no, no, we don't know who Ruth Brown is. And then I would play it, you know, and pretty soon I was doing Ruth Brown's music on this all country show. At first, uh, I think people looked at me, well, this is strange, you know, this is an all country show. But they loved it. They loved it. They would just tear the place down. We had two shows a night. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a name for it. It was up-tempo and it was lively and it was something happening rather than just getting out there, you know, and, and with a guitar and getting behind a microphone and just standing. And my mama come running out the front door and uh, she said, we have got to go to Jake Owen's store and return this phone call. Chet Atkins has called and they want you to come to Nashville. So uh, that's how I met him. I went down and uh, he liked what I did. I know he, he sometimes at the session he would just he would just start laughing, you know, because this music, you know, was coming about and he was having to cut it with me, he was having to cut it with Elvis and the Jordan Airs there. I mean he was having to do this stuff. And uh, he really liked it. Chet Atkins, a guitar virtuoso and an A and R man for RCA, was responsible for recording some of the first rockabilly performers moving to major labels. And Janice was the new addition to a roster which also included former Sun Records artist Elvis Presley. It was a puzzle that Elvis's old boss at Sun, Sam Phillips, had been unsuccessful finding a rockabilly queen for his king. But RCA was undaunted by this fact. A staff publicist quickly decided that Janice Martin had what it took to be billed as the female Elvis. They approached me and I said, no way. No. I don't want that type. I wanted to make it on my own. Uh, but they got together and they talked to Colonel Tom and to Elvis and whatever. By that time, I saw him perform. And I thought, my God, he spells his name. Five letters, E-L-V-I-S, J-A-N-I-S. We could have been twins, you know? And the parallels were just there. And as with Elvis, Janice's favor in the recording industry grew. RCA executive Steve Scholes began promoting her heavily, and Billboard magazine voted her most promising female artist of 1956. But despite her growing popularity, some sectors of American society were put off by rockabilly and by performers like Janice. The girl next door image was highly prized in the 50s, but not every girl could live up to that image. Tommy and I married in January the 2nd of 1956. I did not record for RCA until March the 8th of 1956. So I didn't tell the record company. I didn't tell anybody because we eloped. 
In Nashville, Chet Atkins presented Janice with a song to record. The irony of the number was not lost on her, but it completely escaped Atkins and the others at RCA. He said, here, let's go in here and we'll play this. And it started off, let's elope, baby, you know. Well, naturally, I kept it, I kept it a secret from the record company because uh, uh, you just didn't get married at 15 then, you know, or whatever. And they had all the teenage image going on me, the sweet little innocent, fresh-faced girl, which I was, really. Her secret was easy to keep because Tommy, a paratrooper, had been stationed overseas in Germany. But when Janice realized RCA was going to send her on a USO tour in Europe, she couldn't resist arranging a conjugal visit. The brass gave Tommy a 30-day leave, and he eagerly joined the tour. I mean, the tour manager's saying, what the hell is this, you know? Who is this guy? I said, he's my husband, whatever. Oh my God. So they put in a call to New York. Oh God, they were mad. Oh, they were upset. Janice came back to the States triumphant from the tour with unintended, if not entirely unexpected results. And I came back with a little package. I was called in and uh, the suggestion was made that maybe we could do something about this little problem that I had, and uh, no way. I wouldn't do it, and I think I realized when I, I not only because the child was there, uh, I'd felt no movement or nothing, but if you ever carry a child and you have that love, I knew the consequences. And she still had obligations to the label. Eight months pregnant, Janice made one more recording for RCA. Steve Scholes was standing in the control room with my mother, and tears were pouring down his cheeks. How come? Because I had burst the whole teenage image that they had created for me. I used to make a joke uh, after Tom Ingram contacted me and wanted me to do Viva Las Vegas. I went in and looked at myself in the mirror one morning, and I said, hey, old gal, I said it took you 59 years, but you're going to Vegas, <laughs> you know. And uh, I was kind of nervous about it, but when they come and got me and I walked in that back hallway, they were all crowded around the stage as far as I could see. And when they saw me, even though I was 59 years old, and they'd seen the little 15, 16 year old, they knew who I was. And when I come through there and went up the steps and walked out on the stage and they just roared, there's nothing like this. I mean, you know, I'd give up anything for this. They said that she was the female Elvis. No, no. Elvis was the female Janice. Look, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Janice Martin. Let's hear it now. If these people waited all these years, then what are you afraid of? I mean, you go out there and it's, it's the fans. They're there. I hate to fly. I absolutely am horrified. I don't even want to go to the restrooms on a plane. But the reason I go is because I know they're over there and they're waiting to see me. And I haven't, you know, when I go next year, uh, the first of next year, I haven't been to Europe since 1994. It's time. It's time. To learn more about rockabilly women, log on to itvs.org.